This is Eric from Crystal PM, and this is a tutorial for the redesigned version of the direct mail integration. The redesign adds many new features and improves the overall experience. So we'll be going over the setup process and how to use the new user interface. First, we're gonna look if the direct mail integration is already turned on. So we go to admin email. And so now you can see under direct inbox, there's actually a button right here, which will take you to the new inbox. And so if I click this now, the new inbox shows up as well as the compose tab here. But first we're just gonna look at the settings. So if you see here, the direct settings, this is grab from our web server. So if you've already paid for the direct mail integration, this should already all be set up. If not, and you already know that you've paid for it, you can click this button here. That'll grab that information from our server and put it in these settings. And you don't have to save or anything like that from here. Clicking this button saves that information. And then down here, there's a new setting, uh, retrieval settings. So by default, just like before, you can manually retrieve messages. Um, but there's also the option to automatically or manually retrieve messages on a set interval. So one machine gets ownership of that task, and then it just every so often on this interval, for example, like default is five minutes, and you can make this one or more minutes, and it'll grab new messages. And under your user, if you have the notification option enabled, if there are new unread messages, a little box will show up in the bottom right showing how many unread messages there are to that to your address. Next we're going to look at the individual settings under your user or your employee. So we'll go to admin employees. And under integrations, this is where you'll see direct mail enabled for user and notification of unread messages. So by default, if you're already a master admin or under admin, you have email, the email tab checked, then this will automatically be checked when you come here. And even if you haven't checked it yet, it'll assume that it's enabled. So this is already set here for me. And then also this will automatically be checked notification of unread messages. So if you don't wanna see a notification in the bottom right of your screen showing how many unread messages there are to the address. Um, just uncheck that and hit update here. And if you the same thing for if you if it's not enabled and you want to enable it. And now if you've made any changes to a user, go ahead and hit the update button. And if you are this user and you want to start using the integration immediately, um, I'd highly recommend that you close down Crystal and reopen it. So now we know that the integration is enabled. It's enabled for the current user that we're logged in as, and we've logged out and we've closed out Crystal and opened it back up. And so now if we go under import export, we'll see many more options. We'll see direct email inbox unread. So that displays the inbox and the unread messages only. And then we have compose, compose patient, Compose patient, attach summary of care CCD, and then also attaching the CCD with a referral option. So just the patient assigns the patient to the message that you're creating. This automatically generates a summary of care CCD and attaches it to the message. And then the same here, just where it asks you for the referral information. So let's just try this for the sake of example. So under direct mail inbox unread, I click that and the direct mail messages tab will appear and it'll just be showing the unread to this address. And so let's try the other scenario where we create a new message for the patient that we're on. So let's just go to an existing patient. And now under import export, I'm going to choose the patient attach summary of care CCD option. And so you can see here that it's already assigned the patient to the message. 
and it's already attached the summary of care CCD that it just generated on the fly to that message. And since we're composing a new message, we can also add other attachments. So here under Add, we can add a file, which will bring up the Explorer browser, so we can just search for any file on the machine and select that, or multiple files. And here, if you click Patient Files, it'll show the list of patient files for the patient, and you can select one or many of these and add those to the message. There's also the option to automatically attach or generate and attach a summary of care CCD, just like we did here already. And then if we did this here, where the referral is an option, you'd select physician and then also the reason for the referral. Now let's say we don't want to send this message immediately, we just want to save it as a draft. So under here, we can click the Save as Draft button. And so now if we go under the Messages tab and under Draft, you'll see this message here. So we can just go ahead and double click that and resume composing it. And so the only thing we have missing uh, is the to address and the subject. So under address, we click that and the address book comes up. So here you can add contacts, delete, and then overwrite the existing ones. So let's say I wanted to change um, the middle name of that contact, I would just change that field and hit save. I want to create a new contact, I just hit the new button. But here we're just going to select that address. So you can do that. You can select one or multiple addresses. You can just double click an address here. Or you can hold shift and select multiple rows and then hit select and it'll add all those as two addresses. But here I'm just going to double click this one. And we're just going to send this message back to ourselves. And for the subject, I'm going to use test. And then now I'm going to send this message to ourselves. And so now that message was successfully sent. So let's just say that we're waiting for a new message to come in. And right now it's just set to be manually checking. If it was automatic, then it would just check that often by default every five minutes. But here we're just going to retrieve the message immediately. And so now that new message comes up. And we can double click that. And so from here you can see that the patient is not already selected. This is a new message but we already have the demographics information. So the first name test, last name test, uh, sex and date of birth. And based on that information, as long as you have the first name, last name and date of birth, it makes it really easy to find the existing patient in Crystal. You just hit the find button. And based on that first name and last name and date of birth, it automatically brings up this existing patient, which is actually the one we just sent it for. So you just double click that. And so now that patient is assigned to that message that we just sent ourselves. So in a real world scenario, um, if the message you're getting has a CCD in it, it'll parse that information out of that message and place it into these fields. And then when you search in here, it'll use that as criteria for finding that existing crystal patient. And you would just select it. And now I'm going to get into some topics that relate to meaningful use functionality. So if we look at just creating a new message, one of the parts of meaningful use is the ability to create a direct mail message that's a request for a summary of care CCD. And this applies towards meaningful use. Um, so if you check that, that will count. But you need to assign a patient to the message first, and that applies in most of these situations. Um, so here, we would just select Test, and then now you can select that checkbox. And then let's say that the provider that you sent that request to actually does send back a CCD. 
then you'd go to that message, you'd open it up, you'd assign a patient to it, and then you'd go back in here and confirm patient summary of care available. So let's click that. And if the patient that you mapped it to doesn't have a primary doctor assigned and doesn't have a doctor assigned to any of their medical records or the doctor that you're logged in as is different from that doctor, then this is gonna pop up. So this is basically just asking you which doctor do you want to give this meaningful use action ownership over? So in this situation, I just select myself, and you have the option to select the location as well as the date. So I'll just hit save. But in most situations, this isn't going to pop up. Now in the scenario where you're the doctor that's sending the summary of care CCD, that message actually has to get to the recipient and you can check on the status of that under the Sent tab. So here, we have three different tabs on the end here. Delivery status pending, delivered, and then failure. So it's either gonna show up in delivered or failure. And here we can see that under delivered, it's listed, but you're not gonna know that it's failed till after the message has been sent. So at first, by default, it'll be delivered, but there's the potential that it isn't, and that message is going to be automatically parsed when it comes in. You'll actually see it in the inbox, but it's based on the ID, the original ID of the message that was sent. It's going to figure out whether it failed to go to a particular recipient, and then if it actually did fail, it's going to switch over here. So all of that is recorded. So at the beginning, you are going to get credit for meaningful use for sending that summary of care CCD to that provider. But if it does end up failing, that criteria will be updated. So now we'll just be going over how to use the inbox as well as how to import attachments. So here, click the inbox, and now we just see messages that we've received. If I just wanna see those unread to this address, click here, and if I wanna see those unread to me only, which means my user, then click that. I can mark a message as read, and if I click that, I can say it was read for me, my user, or for receiving addresses, which is just this address right here. That's for everybody. So for receiving addresses, that means that anyone who logs in, and for me, that means just my user. And that unread notification that shows up in the bottom right, that's based on the receiving addresses and not for you specifically. You can also delete messages. And so here, if I just click on this message and I hit the delete button. So if I click for all, that means it permanently deletes the message. It doesn't go to the trash. If I click for me, that means I'm just deleting it for my user, so I won't see it if I'm logged in. And if you delete it for receiving addresses, that'll put it in the trash for everyone. So now let's look at importing attachments from messages. So we'll just go to the inbox and we'll double click the message here. And so we have the original CCD, the XML version, and the HTML version. So let's say I just want to import the HTML version to a patient's files. So first of all, we need to have a patient selected. Now we could also just view these attachments by double clicking on them individually. And so here, it just automatically brings up the default program for that file extension, like the HTML file extension. And that's just Chrome here. And so that automatically popped up. And if I click the import button and I have that attachment selected and the patient selected, then I can hit two patient files. And so that just allows me to import that attachment into that patient's files.
And then there's another option, which is to import the data from a CCD as discrete patient data. So that's just the same as it was in the original integration. We just select the XML version of a CCD and click that button. And you can choose to validate the CCD. I'm just going to skip that part and hit no. And here is that same functionality um, that was there before where you can update that current patient and consolidate their problems, medications, and allergies as well.